I do want to spend a minute or a few minutes talking about all of the realms of, of the master. I'm the one that likes the patrolling part. I'm not sure why. I don't like confronting people, but I guess I have such a passion for the beach. Um, and it's actually a learning skill, learning speech techniques of how you talk to someone. You either make them listen or you build a wall. And I don't want to get into details, but when somebody's misbehaving and they know in their mind they're misbehaving and they get confronted, it's very likely the wall goes up. So everything, you know, I'm not going to get into those details now, but I just mentioned that. Um, Ambassadorship has two or three or four facets, however you want to call it. One is enforcement. It's walking the beach and making sure our social etiquette and the law are enforced. We are not the ones that have the power. We have no power, and yet we have a great deal of influence. People will tell you to get lost. They will tell you that they've been walking around with erections for years and it's the norm and uh, I should get lost, so you need to deal with everything. Um, but I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, so that's the part that I focus on mostly is the patrolling part. But as a patrol, you also become a greeter and a concierge. The more we know and can get and communicate and talk to people, gives us an excuse to talk, to get to know them, and they will ask, where's a good place to eat? Is there anything recreational around here? Where's the best place to stay overnight? Because many people come in from outside and having the information is very useful. Um, the other part that is very critical on the beach is the membership table. We are the visibility with our hats. And Paul's got the type of pith helmet we used to have, I still wear it, because I like it as you need to have a distinguishing thing on your head. He's also holding up a blue cap. Yeah, we got the blue caps too. If you don't like the big hat. People much yeah. prefer the baseball cap. Unfortunately, it is very close to the Miami Dolphin colors <laughs> and you can't read it so you have to be close. Uh, but we do need visibility. The president, uh, the, the board members in the meeting are not the visible person. The people on the beach are what gets the recognition, so that's important. Um, so you're learning information to give to people. They say, what's happening over there? And we have to have to tell them they're building a 500 boat <laughs> storage building in our parking lot. So you need to know what's going on in the community to convey to your people. Um, but the reach out, the membership thing, reaching out to people is important. Most of this conference, including most of what I'm going to talk about even, is about that. The specific training of what you do when you come up to a person who is getting a little bit frisky with their partner and so on. Uh, we can talk, you know, at different times here because we can talk forever on that, but that's not the main gist of it right now. So, um, we put together different categories. Category one, is get to know your beach history and beach etiquette. And of course it's important to know the etiquette, what's expected, and to know the history really makes you feel like you're an important part of that time. A big problem with ambassadors is keeping them interested and motivated and feel like it's important for them to get up that day and go to the beach and put their hat on and walk the beach. If you just feel like you're there confronting people with too many glass bottles, and the glass bottle issue gets to the point that you almost get tired of talking to people about it. But, but it feels like an unimportant job at the bottom level, like the janitor almost, but it's not. A conference like this is what tells us you know, what it's really about. It's about acceptance of everything. Um, the beach et and the etiquette and the history, um, yeah, that, that's very important. Uh, category two is to meet and get to know the local government management, park department, the, the law enforcement, the police on the beach. We're fortunate that we have 
we have a beach where they have working toilets. They have actually even vending on the beach. They have lifeguards that work for us, not against us. And we have police that are driving around appreciating us. And we have a park department that marvels how clean our beach is compared to across the fence. You've got a real trash barrel towards the evening. Um, and it really, really makes a difference that they know who we are. We are still finding out that new lifeguards are saying, who are those people with hats on? So that's an area we have fallen short. Uh, we have to make sure they know who we are because we're helping them. Category three is to meet and get to know the various beach cliques. On the beach I call over, it's not like the northern states where just the young people go hang out at the beach and uh, you know they go on weekend. This is a social place. Well, I go and see my friends, and quite frankly, the beach age is way higher than it is in Lake Calhoun and Minneapolis uh, with young people. And uh, so it's nice to know who the people are that can give you information, that can tell you if there's a problem. And there are certain groups that you know of that um, there are swinger groups. I mean, swingers and beach people overlap, but you, uh, but they can behave. They can act either part fine, and I'm perfectly fine with it. But sometimes you pay a little more special attention to one group just to make sure. Um, so it's good to know. Um, go and visit and get to know the regional clothes-free business entities and clubs and resorts. Uh, we don't have a lot of local ones, but that's what the uh, Anner people are. And uh, it's good to know who they are. People ask. And again, we're the concierge. And uh, we feel like we're part of this big time. Here, we're not just a master. We're an amazing group of people. It's good to know the restaurants and the lodging facility because that's what people would like to know. And nice to have a relationship with them by which if you come down and you're a member of Anner or South Florida Free Beaches or any nature's group, you can present a card and get a 10% off. Now we, we haven't worked on that as much as we should, but that serves two purposes. It gives you an inexpensive place to stay and it tells the business that they're getting your business because you're nature's. There are some people that actively tell at any place they go to the restaurant and say, I'm here because I'm a nudist on the beach. And they start remembering that, wait a minute, we don't have pockets, but we give money. So, <laughs> and really, economics that does, does it. Um, get to know and understand your local city, county, state laws and govern, that govern nudity. And that's where, as the patrol person, you really have to know that. The borderline, and I could give you 100 incidents that are even borderline, you don't know, would they prosecute, would they not, but uh, you have to deal with all that. Um, getting to know the National Nude Recreation Organizations, their history and their mission. Again, the same thing, you're, you're feeling like the big organization. Getting to know park rules and environmentally sensitive issues, keeping people out of the dunes and uh, the sea turtles at night. We have a few, Tom is one of the people that goes out there at night and sees these turtles climbing out of their nest and going the wrong way and getting caught up in the, in the seaweed. Um, so you notice all of these things together, or many of them, uh, knowing the beach etiquette, knowing the laws, when you're patrolling the beach, you have to know that. You have to know and be clear on what you do. The part I won't get into now is how you react to that person, the best way you talk to them. That's an individual training thing. I could spend six hours on it. Some of you know it would be very bored, and that's not the purpose of this here. Um, and ambassadors and board members should work together. Sometimes you have the board up there and you have ambassadors down here, and it's very important for ambassadors to interact with the, the board members. It, uh, it just goes both ways. Um, get to know the troublemakers out on the beach within the various, and within the various government agencies as well as our supporters. Um, 
you know where there's trouble, you know where to look. And patrolling a beach is very easy for them to see you coming and uh, modify behavior and uh, knowing where to look helps quite a bit. Um, Paul's going to talk to you a little bit now about the... Inf okay, I'm going to talk about more of the information table. We set one up occasionally when we have enough volunteers on the beach and uh, it's more of the concierge of the beach. You come get information, see who's on the beach, where, where to go on the beach, where does the bus stop, where does the restaurants. And along that line, along those lines, since we're the concierge, when you go to a hotel, you, you know, you go check in over there, you go over here, and that's where you get all your information for the local area. Well, we pretty much tell our ambassadors, you know, get to know the area of the park, the area of Dade County, of the North Broward, North, no, North Dade area, even Broward County even. Since 01, we put, actually put together the Beach Ambassador Man, I mean, which you all pretty much saw online now. We did do, do it in 01 before online, it was so technical now. And we actually have this. If, you don't, if you're old-fashioned and you want a hard copy, I do have hard copies for you here today. And then Gary, Gary Muscle took our ambassador and improved it to Bates Beach in California, which they have a manual too, copied by Paul Lover. And besides that, we do put out the beach guide. We haven't done it recently, but we were still working on the next copy. If you need a copy, I do have a few here. We'll put them on the table. Uh, that's our latest copy, and we're still trying to work on the next issue. Uh, but we're doing a Working with New Sun and getting information out that way, and that's a print that's on the west coast of Florida. Oh. Um, and we mostly work with, um, like Ken said, you know, people coming to us for information on how to deal with situations on the beach, along with knowing what, hey, wow, because we get, the beach has been going for 27 years, and 28 years coming up, and people come on that beach for the first time in their life, and they're going, Wow, a nude beach. And he said, yeah, well you like to travel around the country nude. And it's like, you can? Well you go to Cypress Cove and they get new people from all over all the time up there. And you go to different resorts throughout Florida and throughout America the same way. And being a concierge on the beach, that's what we promote. Is the different resorts, the different beaches. We got Blind Creek up the coast, we got Playa Linda further up the coast. And it's not just watching the people on the beach, of you know, the behavior, but it's the whole realm of the beach, of who to watch, because they do at the resort too. Carolyn works at Cypress Cove, and they're the pool people at the beach doing the same stuff us ambassadors are doing. So they're ambassadors at the resort. They do. I mean, I'll, I'll sit in the cove and tell uh, Carolyn or uh, Charles that, hey, watch this guy over here in the corner. You know, it just it happens everywhere, not only on the beach. So it kind of broadens the whole perspective. You're an ambassador everywhere. It's like Jack's up in Lake Como. He's not on the beach, but he's promoting the beach as well as the resorts. So the ambassadors cover the whole gamut of naturism, as well you can see. So if you have any more questions, if you can't find it online, I do have a few hard copies here. Anything else, Ken? Uh, I don't want to get into details of it now, but every one of your art, when you form your organization, You've got to find a uh, set up an established way for someone to become an ambassador. Who they contact, you need an application form, you have whatever criteria it takes for the ambassador to sign up. Uh, all over the parks department, since Beaches Foundation is a program partner, they require all of their program partners to have everybody do background checks. So we require mm -hmm. the ambassador to pay the $20 for the background check and actually you get free parking, so that's $7 parking, you know, within uh, a few weeks, it's paid back very readily. But, so you need to set up a system of who's the person in charge, who will do the background check, uh, who fills out the badge. I don't have my badge here, but... Uh, oh, we do give you an actual official... Here's one. I'm sure we got one too. Sure has got one too, but we do, as an ambassador, you do actually get a badge. Let me turn around so you can see it. Uh, and you do get a list of instructions of what to, how to handle different situations and the phone numbers and the call. So you get your information right with you most of the time. So you do get an actual official badge. I hate wearing badges, so I stick it in my hat because they give me a hat. Another thing, when you walk the beach, try to carry your cell phone. Because the first thing you do is when you pull your cell phone out, because they don't think you have one, 
I go like this. Call, call, I can call Ken at the other end of the beach and say, hey, do this. They're already running off the beach before I even have to enforce anything else. I ask them to leave. They don't want to leave. I pull this out and start calling. I can call Ken or Jack or anybody else that's on the beach and say, come on down here and let's take care of this guy. As soon as I do this, they're already running off the beach before or I have to deal with them. Sometimes you only pretend you call. Yeah. Then you go and they dismiss you, so you go 75 feet away and you pick up your phone and you kind of try and angle like you're you know, you back at them once in a while. They have no idea who you're talking to, if you're talking to her. And we've been told, and it is true, that on our beach, your beach, every beach, some of those people have criminal records. The last thing in the world some guys want is for a police officer to walk up to them and say, can I have your identification, please? So we do have a lot of good things working for you. As I said before, we've got tricks of the trade. It is not illegal to take a picture on the beach as long as it's not you know, a, a child in a very sexual pose. However, we've got, we usually can talk a photographer out of it. I mean, first of all, you say, and I'll get into this as an example, can say, excuse me, it's against the rules to take a picture. Most cases, people will say, okay, I mean, you explain to them, too, that it's embarrassing and you may compromise someone. Um, but somebody will say, no, I know the law, I can take a picture on a public beach, no problem. I say, well, you take pictures of strangers. You're planting doubt in their mind. Well, so what? I, I still don't know. Well, all over does have a requirement, this is true, that you have to, commercial photographers, have to get out a permit with the park. They oh, I'm not a permit. I, I, I really don't. And, and I say, well, okay. What if there happens to be a child, a minor, in the background, even a 17-year-old girl who can legally be on the beach, you know, alone with her friends? You probably are not guilty of anything, you know, photography of a child pornography. However, this state is very touchy about those things, you are likely to get arrested first. And when you go to court, you'll probably be found innocent. But do you really want to go through all the work? And if they still argue with you, say, well, why not call a police officer? You know, maybe you're right, but let's have the officer do it. And most cases, they're gone. The ones that are difficult, when somebody comes on the beach with a big camera and just plows through anybody and everybody, shooting pictures and people are screaming at them that they get their pictures, and do not physically touch them because you become the assaulter. So that's what you have to be very careful of. So you, you work for the rules the best you can. Right. But, and the other rule is never put yourself in danger. Um, you know, the following, uh, another trick if you do get threatened, you can say, you know, our rules are I took a picture as I approached you, and by the way, the picture gets automatically sent to headquarters. So. <coughs> He knows that taking your camera and throwing it in the ocean is not going to hide the evidence. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you look at all the tricks, and I'll talk about that when it's one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, it, it's interesting.